In this session, we're going to look at some Civil 3D 2017 improvements that have to do with corridor modeling. I've got a drawing open on my screen. This is called 03 FL Baselines. The geometry that we see represents a portion of a proposed parking lot design. Notice how some of this geometry is red. These are feature lines. And this geometry represents the portion of the parking lot that has been designed. These feature lines are drawn to a true 3D elevation. Just for a second, let me pan the drawing over, and I'm going to zoom in over here to the east. Here you can see I've created an assembly. I called this Parking CG for Curb Gutter. I created this assembly because I am going to model this parking lot using a corridor, and I'm going to sweep that assembly around each of these feature lines. Let's take a look. To create the corridor, I'll come up to the Create Design panel. I'll launch the Corridor command. And I apologize for my screen size here. I'm going to call this corridor parking lot. And if we come down here, you can see that in Civil 3D 2017, we can now use a feature line as the baseline of our corridor. Once I select feature line, I can then select the site that includes that feature line. I can then open the feature line menu and select a feature line from that site. In fact, it's even easier. Let me change the site here back to none. If you don't happen to know the name of the feature line you're interested in, you can always come over and click this green block. I would like to use this feature line as the baseline of my corridor. I can see that feature line has a name. I called it Island 3. If you're going to use a feature line as a baseline, that feature line needs to have a name. Don't worry if the feature line doesn't have one to start with. You can always name it at the point it's selected. Now that I've chosen my baseline, I will select the assembly. We'll choose Parking Curb Gutter. I do not have any target surfaces. I don't want to see the dialog box. I'm just going to come down and click OK. And if I zoom in, you can see the corridor. Let's create a surface. I'll do that by selecting the corridor. I'll come up and choose Corridor Surfaces. I'm going to create a new surface. We'll keep the default name and style. I'm going to build the corridor from feature lines, and then I'm going to use the feature lines that make up the part in my assembly. We'll add the back of curb. I'll add the flange, flow line gutter, and top of curb. When I'm finished, I'll come down and click OK, and we'll rebuild. I will then press Escape to deselect the corridor. Let me select the surface and I'll come up and choose Object Viewer and we'll rotate this up and you can see that this island looks exactly like you would expect. Let's close the Object Viewer. I'll press Escape to deselect the surface and we'll add another baseline to this corridor. We'll add this island down here to the south. I'll select the corridor. I'll go to Corridor Properties. Here on the Parameters tab I'll choose Add Baseline. Once again I'm going to be adding a feature line. I'll click the green block and I'll select my feature line. I can see that one's called Island 7. Let me click OK. Once the baseline's created, I'll right-click and choose Add Region. I'll select my assembly and click OK. I will then choose OK, and we'll rebuild. Let me zoom in. I'll press Escape to deselect. Notice how the corridor is being nicely cleaned up at these inside and outside corners. This is another new feature of Civil 3D 2017. Now I know what you're thinking. I wonder if this corridor cleanup works with daylight lengths. And the answer is, not yet. Currently, this feature works with fixed length corridor lengths only. Corridor lengths having variable lengths, this includes daylighting, is something being looked at for a future release. Now that I've added the baseline, let's select the surface. We'll go to Object Viewer. I'll tip this up, and you can see how my parking lot model is starting to take shape. Once again, we'll close the viewer, and I'll press Escape. Now let's look at a potential issue. I'm going to add another baseline. Let's choose the corridor, Corridor Properties. We'll add a baseline. It's going to be a feature line. I'll select this small island this time, and I'll click OK. I will then add a region. I'll click OK, and we'll rebuild. So far it looks OK. Let's select the surface, and we'll open this up in Object Viewer. If I zoom in, notice how this island appears to pop up, whereas this one goes down. That is because of the direction the feature line was drawn. We need to reverse this feature line. Let's close the Object Viewer, and I'll press Escape. I'm going to draw order my corridor to the back. I'll select it, and then I'll right-click. We'll say Display Order, Send to Back. To reverse the feature line, I will select it, and in the Edit Geometry panel, I'll click Reverse. I will then press Escape, I'll select the corridor, and I'll rebuild. Finally, we'll select the surface, and we'll take a look at this one more time in the Object Viewer. There we go, that looks much better. Let's do one more. I'll close the Object Viewer, and I'll press Escape. I'm going to add this feature line to the southeast. I'll select the corridor again. We'll go to Corridor Properties. We'll add another baseline based on a feature line. I'll select the southeast feature line. Click OK. We will add the region. And we'll rebuild. Let's take a look at the surface in the Object Viewer. If I tip this up and zoom in, 
we can see that the northernmost corner of this island has a problem. Let me show you what causes this. I'm going to close the object viewer and I'll press escape. In fact, if I zoom in, you can see the issue right here. The curb is crossing itself at that corner. Let me pan this up. If you are working with a closed feature line, you want to make sure that the start point, also being the end point, falls along a tangent or at a point of curvature or a point of tangency. In this case, my start point falls at a corner. That's what's causing the issue. Now, how can we fix this? I'm going to select the feature line and I'll come down and open the isolate menu and choose isolate objects. This isolates only that feature line on screen. I will then launch the polyline command and I'll create a polyline from this endpoint and I'll press escape. So this polyline is really just holding the elevation and location of that vertex. Let's create another polyline. I'm going to draw this from the midpoint of this edge and I'll pull this out and press escape. I will then select the feature line and I'll grab my start point and I'll move it to the end point of this polyline. Feature line still selected. I'll come up to the edit geometry panel and I'll choose insert point of intersection. And I'll add a new PI here at the end of this polyline and I'll press enter to accept the elevation. When I'm finished, I'll press escape to get out of the command. I no longer need the polylines. I will select those and delete. I will then come down to the isolate menu and I'll choose end object isolation. Finally, I will select the corridor and we will rebuild. When I'm all finished, I'll press escape. I'll select the surface. We'll go back to object viewer and we'll take a look. There we go. Much better. Let me close the viewer. Now I'm not going to have you watch me finish the entire parking lot. I do have a finished example. Let me come over to this parking finished drawing. Here you can see that I have one corridor that represents the entire parking lot design. Let's select this surface and we'll take a look at it in the object viewer. So if you are someone who typically grades parking lots using feature lines, Civil 3D 2017 now lets you use corridors as a means of creating those feature lines. In fact, the new baseline and corner cleanup options make corridors a much more powerful tool for modeling site designs. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.